Welcome, welcome. This is the video for how to do the pineapple block for the opportunity quilt for the managed patch workers. Hopefully I spelled opportunity right. So, as you can see right here, we have the, uh, this is what your block should look like. Now, as far as colors go, you don't have to put the colors in exactly this, um, this way. You can put the colors, you know, whichever, like this doesn't have to be orange, and that doesn't have to be red. Um, the only thing we ask is that you take the, the pink that is provided, this pink color right here, and make sure you have it in the block at least two, three times, at least three times, two, two to three times, okay? Um, now, of course, there's not enough to do it in the center because the center box block is a three by three block, and um, the piece that you're given is not wide enough. You've been given your white fabric, and you've been given your pink fabric. So make sure before you do any cutting, before you do anything, make sure you read your pattern at least twice. Go through and read it at least twice. Um, I say read it once and then look at what you have and then read it again. And then you can start cutting. So basically the way it works is she wants you to take your, your white, your white on white, which is this one right here. Take your white on white and you're going to cut out um, four pieces each of three and a half inch, five, four, three and a half inch, four, four inches, and four, five inches. That's for the white. Now here's where I made my first mistake. Um, when I cut out my pinks, I used the same exact size, but what you need for the pink is a little bit different. So all the two, two inch strips for the color are actually going to be a little bit larger. So you're going to want to do four, four, four inches, four, no, sorry, just, you're going to need to do four inch, five and a half inch, and six and a half inch. So if you have one block, you're going to need one four, one five and a half, and one six and a half. All right, so that's that's what you want to do with the pinks. Now with your other colors, whatever colors you decide to use, um, here's kind of a, um, a look at some of the colors I picked out for mine. Um, you want to make sure that you're doing, if you're only doing one block, you only need one of each color, one four, one five and a half, one six and a half, just to make sure you have enough. And you want to do uh, four, five different colors of the different ones that you have. And that way you can kind of mix it up. Like in some of these, they only have one color of each. And if you have enough scraps to do that, that's great. Definitely um, go with that. Just remember, like I said, the colors, you're going to do a different size. It's going to be four, five and a half, and six and a half. Of the whites, you're going to do three and a half, four and a half, and five and a half. Make sure I found that right. Yep, three and a half, four, and five inch on the whites. Okay. Again, read your directions, read them twice. It always helps. Now on your um, other colors, all, uh, your bright colors, on all your bright colors, also remember that there is gonna be uh, the four corners right here, 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 and here. And these you're going to need to make sure that you have two and a half inches by four inches. Um, it needs to be a little bit wider. So if you're only doing one block, you just need four different colors of two and a half inch by four inch. Okay. All right. So let's talk a little bit about, um, doing a pineapple block. It is paper pieced. Um, some people may even call it foundation piece, but it's paper foundation. So I guess it's, it's still paper piecing. All right. Let me get these out of the way. This is what my finished block looks like. Um, when I completed the first one, cause of course I've I went through and made one first because I make mistakes like everybody does. So this was my first one and it looked pretty good. Um, this is the foundation paper. Of course, this is the back side, front side. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sewing on one side while replacing the fabric on the other side. Now you have two options. Actually, you have a bunch of options for a light box. You can either use a regular light box like this one here. Um, which is 
uh, one I picked up at one of my classes um, that I went to. And you can use this to help you see where to put the placement, okay? Um, you can also use um, over here, let me, let me switch the cameras real quick. And let's put it on the throat cam. Oh, and turn off that one. Sorry, guys, I'm still getting used to this. All right, so here's my throat cam. And underneath here, I have a little light. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, little light I picked up from, like, I think this may have been, um, oh, gosh, I can't think of the name of the place. Um, one of the hardware stores. I picked up the hardware stores. It's got magnets on the bottom. I, I don't know what I was thinking, but it actually turned out to be a really good purchase. So when you turn this one on and you slide it underneath your light box, you suddenly have this fantastic light here. Let me turn this one off so you maybe can see it. Okay. So now you have this fantastic light right here that you can put your Put your paper up here right on top of your your see-through table. Now the other option is you can put a piece of tape uh, paper, um, which I've done before, if, if you just need something that you can't see through. All right. All right. So let me go back. We're going to turn this off. Okay. And we're going to come back to this one. And give me just a second. Cam, no. Table view. Table view. All right. Let's come back to this. Okay. All right. So if we take a look at it, we see this is our, um, this is our printed side. This is our non-printed side. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the light box back on and find one of my papers. using the light box and I can see now we're going to do fabric side here. Let me see. I guess I'm going to need my light on. Okay. So here is my fabric and it is up right side up and we're going to place it down on the back side of the paper. So we have the back side of the paper here, front side paper here. We're going to be using these lines to stitch on. So we're going to go ahead and put this on the back side of the paper. Now, one of the things I like to use, which all of a sudden is missing. Here it is. Okay. I like to use double, double stick tape just because it'll keep this one little piece down so that it doesn't shift around on me. All right. Hold on just a second. There's like no doors separating that noise. Can we just turn it down a little bit? Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. I'll get flagged for having something recognizable in the background, so I just need to make sure I turn that down. Okay. Sorry. All right. So then the very next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the three and a half inch white strips and you want to make sure you're watching for the um, watching for the top and the bottom. So this is the back side of it and that's the front side. Now it's white on white so you really have to look and make sure. So you're going to do right sides together and here's where the line and we want to come up about a quarter of an inch. Now, the best thing about this is, is it does not have to be perfect. Just so long as you've got the fabric up past the line and you know that you have enough space. So if you're folded over, as you can see, it comes up well above that line. And that's, that's what we're aiming for. We just want to make sure that we're way above it. All right. So the next thing you're going to do is you want to put your hand on this side. Put your hand on this side and you're going to place it on your sewing table like this. So let me go ahead and take a moment to switch it to the other camera. Oops, sorry guys. There we go. All right. All right, so again, we got this side 
and we're going to hold it, place it down. Now I know, I don't know about everybody else's, but I know if I slide mine under here, I'm usually in pretty good shape. All right, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put this right down, right on the very first one. And I will tell you that I take a single back stitch, okay? And so that I make sure that both pieces are up and I've just moved it. Okay. And I pull it up. I use my handy dandy little stiletto. I don't know if anybody has, everybody has a stiletto, but this one is mine and I love it. I have a few of them still on my Etsy site. All right, I'm gonna put this, the needle down. I wanna just make sure I'm in the right place and I'll put my glasses on so I can see. Okay. And I'm going to take a single back stitch, go back to the spot where I want to start. Now, the next thing you have to do, and I'm going to tell you this is very, very, very important, is you have to use a small stitch. So here's what I'm going to put right here. Use a short stitch length, like 1.4 to 1.8, um, nothing bigger than a 2. Um, what's going to happen is you're going to use that short stitch length to create perforations in the paper so that when it comes time to rip it out, um, it'll be a lot easier to take out the paper. All right, so let's go ahead and run this down the line. I'm gonna go try and go a little slow. You don't need to go fast with this. And then I'm gonna backstitch just once. What I'm doing is trying, just trying to stop it from coming unraveled. But that being said, you also want to make sure that it has done what you wanted it to do, um, that it hasn't flipped over. So let's take a look. We're going to go ahead and cut this real quick. Now both pieces of thread are on top. That's great. And we now have it out of the way. And then we're going to trim here. All right. So if you flip it over and you look and flip it, now you have your first one down. And it's still right sides together. It's still the right side. Okay, I have my ironing board really handy, like right here, so we can iron it real quick. And you don't want a real hot iron uh, because it will crinkle up your paper. So some people like to use the little rolly things or to have these, the pointy tools. You can use those to do your crease or can't hardly see it on here. Um, whoop. Apparently I've got my cord caught. I'll have to see if I can fix that. And then just kind of give that a just a quick pressing. Pressing or either use the your stick, your pressing stick. I have this one and another one that I really like is this one which was given to me at one of the retreats and I absolutely love it. Okay. Get that out of the way for right now. And we're going to come over here to the other one. Okay. And All right, so if we flip this off real quick, so just so you can see it, there's that stitch line that we were talking about, and it creates a very small, very small stitch line so that when it's time, we can perforate it. So one of the, probably one of the very first things we should have done before we pressed it is flipped it back over, flip it this way, and then I don't know how many people have the add a quarter plus. This is great. I love using it and you can cut off your, let me move this out of the way, cut off that little bit of a quarter of an inch there. Okay. 
So this quarter, this add a add a quarter, add a quarter. It has a little lip on it, so that you can nestle it right up to the paper, and then trim that off. And then when you flip it over, and flip it over, you have a perfect quarter of an inch underneath that paper. You can do the exact same thing with a regular ruler. You're just going to use the mark. The quarter of an inch mark right to right there and just be careful not to cut the paper and just trim it rough right there and you'll find later on when you have a lot of fabric left over that you're really gonna be glad you have it Let me get my paper got my stuff caught hang on okay all right so let's go ahead and add the rest of it which pile am I working from here? Well, okay. Apparently I have lots of extra piles of that over there. All right. So again, we're going to find the, the line. Right there. Move this out of the way. Grab it, flip it over to here. And then what you want to check for is you want to look underneath here and just make sure it didn't fold because I had two pieces that folded on me and I had to go in and rip it out very carefully. And of course, now my piece a fabric that I was using was no longer any good. So you definitely want to make sure you have enough of your right fabric. Okay, I'm gonna grab that down and get that out of the way. Back stitch at least once. your paper, trim off your little threads, fold your paper, I wonder if I have my little one, oh, there it is. Okay, here we go. That way I don't have to keep moving that thing back and forth. All right, so we're going to flip it over. And at the same time, we're cutting off this one. Oh, hang on. Let me get you, let me get you to the right screen. Okay, so as we're cutting off this one that we just did, so this is the one we just stitched. We're going to fold it over. And use our add a quarter or here let's try the other one because i don't want you to feel like you have to buy a bunch of new stuff for this i mean any you know what you ha already have should be fine okay and then we're just going to trim it off and you want to do this before you fold the fabric over i, I did that too um, before you fold the fabric over um, you want to make sure that you have that done now i'm going to open it up flip it over and again we can use our little pressing tool. I know several of my friends have um, the pressing tool that's the roller and um, I really like that. I think those are those are really cool. Um, so either way you want to do it. And again you can always iron it um, but what I do see is the the paper will start to buckle on you especially if you have it too high. All right now and this light table has been a wonderful addition to my tools. I really, really like it. It has been worth the money I spent on it, and I did spend some money on that thing. All right. So we're going to do the next one. I just like to get a look at where it's at. Okay. And then we're going to flip it over. 
Again, I put both, both hands underneath it like this and then come over and gently put it down. Okay, and then slide it underneath my needle. If your needle catches it, then you need to find another way to do it. And oftentimes that little slippery paper uh, piece that you could buy from like, um, I think the last time I saw it, I saw one at Cotton Patch, but I'm pretty sure that Miss Jerry, who will be on Thursday night, um, Thursday nights at seven at Quilter's Quarters, I bet you anything she can probably get us some if we want them. But it's just a piece of um, uh, kind of slick um, padding that's very thin and you can put it down onto your throat plate and it will help to let things slide very smoothly. I'm going to take one last look and just make sure that it didn't flip on me and that it looks like it's still in place. All right, I did my back stitch and I'm going to go forward. Now you don't have to back stitch, but I like it because then I know that it's not going to start coming out and I'll keep my, um, my corners very crisp. Alrighty, we're going to slide this out and I do have the scissors on mine, but sometimes the thread is so curly and be careful not to cut your fabric when you're doing that too. So don't worry about it. Don't cut too close. If you have to just cut off the extras later. Okay, so here you go. And this is what we look like so far. And we're going to fold it over. And we're going to cut it. So let's come over here to the other side real quick. I wish there was a faster way to do this, but I'm still getting the hang of this. So thank you for taking this, uh, this journey with me on how to use multiple cameras. <laughs> it's been a treat. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to the add a quarter because I do actually love this little thing because it will, it'll just nest right in there so you can't, it won't slide away from you. So it is kind of nice. And I do apologize. The, um, I did finally get the camera that f angles down to my, my board, um, but it's not the best one on the market. In fact, it's, as far as I can tell, it's pretty darn old. All right, so here's that. We're gonna flip it over. Use our handy dandy little tool, which I'll be honest, I think I got this one from Michael's. All right, let's get this out of the way so you can see the next one. And I have pre-cut all of my fabric. Um, I'll be honest, normally what I do is I wait and I cut everything as I need it so I know what I need um, and don't cut too much. But today I decided I was going to cut it all ahead of time. All right, so we have it lined up and I can see right about there is where my line is at. So I'm going to get ready. We're going to go back over here to the throat plate. I got it. I'm going to flip it. So I got it like this. I'm going to flip it like this. I'm trying to make sure that I keep that down. And there it is. Slide it under my needle. And in a minute, we're going to do the round around the... Um, around the outside. We're going to do a color. Pull up. Okay, and then we're going to back stitch a couple times. One is fine, but two is good too. Just don't go crazy with it, especially if you have to rip it out. They also make ripping out a lot harder when you have it um, tacked or back stitched. Okay, needle up. And there's that. We're going to cut those two extra threads. All right, and there's that. Now let's go back over here.
I wanted to do the full screen um, inst instead of the double window, but I didn't this time because I wanted to see how it looked. So you're kind of my, you guys are my experiment. Okay. So the first time I did this, I actually had this up like here and I put it down like this and I was so proud of myself and I cut and then I realized, ta-da, I cut it right off. So make sure that you leave your paper underneath. Don't let it get away from you. Now, as you can see, my this is getting a little bit wide. So I actually have, it's really great is, you know, of all the times that I'm using it, my um, it doesn't slip off So, All right, so the, the one I bought came with two. So it actually has a bigger one for the, for the longer cuts. Okay. Get that out of the way. I'm going to flip it over. And I'm actually going to see about giving it a quick press. Hang on, let me see if I can free up my iron. Well, this could be tricky. Because it is actually caught underneath my camera. Ooh, I don't want that touching the cup of coffee I've got down there. Okay. It is officially freed up now. Let me get back over there. I don't know if you can hear my granddaughter in the background, but it seems like one word that seems to be her, one phrase that seems to be her favorite is, what the heck? Not my favorite, but you know, it is what it is. All right, now we're gonna get to the part where paper piecing pays off. This is a little bit of work, but it pays off and I'll show you why. All right, let's get these out of the way. Now we're gonna go to the color and let's see what colors I have here. Ooh, let's do the Which ones do I have? Let's see if I can make this fit. And you know, don't get chintzy on your on your fabric. This one's just gonna just barely make it. But it will make it. Okay. So this pink right here, this is actually the pink that comes in the kit. And now like I said, they want you to at least include um, two to three pieces on every block and you have to do it on the first second or third row around in the color okay all right so I see where it looks fine here and there I actually am I do have some of the selvage in here but it doesn't look too bad I'm gonna have to have another piece let's see if I have another piece here okay we'll use that one just in case all right there we go all righty and again, we're going to come back over here to the other side. And put this on there. And you want to check it one more time just to make sure everything's where it's supposed to be. That it hasn't slid and flipped or flopped. And like I said, these are, those are all things that I have figured out. Um, on my very first block, <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I, I usually do at least one block, one block, one mask, one s surgery cap or, um, the ones they have to wear at the hospitals. Um, I've made a couple for my daughter. Actually, I think I've made about three or four. Um, and, uh, I probably did that pattern three or four times before I finally got it to where I was happy with it. Okay, again, we're just going to follow right down. I want to make sure I'm on here. Just going to follow that line. Try really hard to stay on the line. Go slow if you have to. Because um, you don't want to... You don't want to get into such a hurry that you're missing things or you're getting kind of sloppy. And trust me, the later it gets in the day and the night, you can get pretty sloppy at it. So I know why I do. All right, and 
Y'all take a look at this. Look at that point. That is a really, really nice point. And all you had to do was follow a line. Okay, so let's go over here back to the table view. Okay, and we're going to flip this down. Again, now look, if you look at it, it's crooked, but you know what, that's okay, because it's still gonna come out perfect. We still have plenty of room around the outside, <clears throat> and that's one of the things I like about doing this particular kind of paper piecing. <clears throat> We're gonna fold that paper. And I think our little one should still fit on this, let's see. Yeah, we still got a little room there. Okay, so we're just going to nudge that add a quarter up to here. And again, you don't have to use the add a quarter. You can just use your um, your ruler and use the um, the quarter inch right there on the edge. I just I like it because I've got it. Might as well use it, and it really is handy. That nice little lip right there catches. So I like it. All right, but again, you don't have to run right out and get one. <laughs> I did actually cut that thing too, didn't I? Yep, I managed to catch a little bit of it. But that's okay because, believe it or not, here, look. This is our next, this is going to be one of our stitch lines, and it falls right in within it. So we're good. So that could have been quite a mistake, but it actually turned out all right. Thank goodness. Lord knows I did enough ripping earlier today. So we're just going to put that down. And then go on to the next one. Now, you can do each one of these separately. But what I did is when I got to a certain point, especially to here, I just went ahead and put all four on. Okay? Because with the way you're going, you're going to be able to get it on. Well, you know what? This one, we probably need to go ahead and put these on individually. Scratch what I just said. Sit here. Good thing I'm talking to you guys. Talking it out. So on this one, let's see. That's that one. That one. Let's use, my goodness, I don't have a whole lot of small ones over here, do I? Hmm. Oh, there they are. There they are. I think these might be too small. Let's see. Yeah, those are too small. All right, come back over here. Let's use this blue one. Okay, and we're just going to line it up right there. And it's okay that it's way too big because, it will, of course, we're going to take it all off okay flip it over let me switch it real quick okay check it one more time just make sure everything's where it's supposed to be nothing flipped all right I like to pull up my thread just because it keeps it from getting that cluster of thread on the back side that you don't see until you pick, lift your foot up. That's your, um, this foot right here. And I kind of keep my hand on it, on the top, until I get to stitching. And then back stitch just a little bit. Okay. Now, once we get past this round, then we'll be able to put all four on at one time. Okay. Make sure I didn't catch something this time. I can't believe that happened. Ah. Of course, then using my cutter on the table without the cutting mat would also be somewhat of a disaster. My ginger needs a new blade. I love my ginger, but I definitely put it through the paces. And then we're gonna flip it over. And remember, they want us to use bright colors Get that out of the way. 
Let's pick a new color. I have some really pretty red. The only thing I worry about is having, you know, similar colors right across from each other or all having them on one side. So, you know, it kind of like half dozen the other kind of thing. So, let's see. Ooh, here's a pretty green. Now let's use the red. Okay, so here's the red. We're going to do it this way. Now if you want to draw out your color and decide which ones you want down first, you can always do that on the back side or on this side and just make a little dot with whatever color you want to put there and make sure that, the, that you've got it where you want it if it means that much to you to you know, do all of that ahead of time. Me, I am really fly by the seat of my pants kind of person way too often. All right, so we're going to put it down. And, oh gosh, guys, sorry. Seems I forgot to change it over. All right, sorry about that. Catch you on the next one. And cut, cut, cut. I think I like it where there's two cams on one, one screen. Um, keeps me from making those silly mistakes like that. And I slide it underneath there. Back stitch, one more time. Get it right to that corner. I like getting as precise as possible. Now, one of the neat things about this is you can actually do several at one time. Um, whereas I'm doing one at a time, you can go ahead and do two or three or four or five blocks all at once. You just do the center pieces first, then you do the next one on each one, so on and so forth. Um, just getting them all done, and they actually go a lot faster that way. All right, and there we have another one. And again, Look at those beautiful points. Point, point, point. I don't know about y'all. I have a little trouble with my points. Um, I, I work very, very hard and have had lots of practice and still my points are off sometimes. So it is so nice when you can do this and the points are pretty much perfect. And that's one of the advantages of this paper piecing style. Okay. Now let's come over here. See if I can go ahead and switch the cameras fully. All right. We're going to come over here and trim off the excess. I remember watching somebody once doing this and I thought, man, that piece of paper is going to be so folded up. But you know what? It didn't matter because eventually they took the papers off anyway. So it just, you know, don't worry about how mangled the paper gets. As long as you can still do what you need to do with it, you are all good don't want to rip it because then you really will have a problem. All right, and then we're going to flip this over. And put this down. And pick another color. And this green is so pretty. All right, let's get this off of here. So we're going to make it to the next row and then I'm going to show you how you can do all four at one time. These first two rows just because of the way they line up on the paper, you really need to do one at a time. Don't try to do them all four at once because you see how it's overlapping here and then over here. It just you're going to make a mess of it if you don't, if you're not careful. So the first two rows, the white and then the first row of colors, you want to make sure that you're um, that you're doing them individually, one at a time. All right, now we're going to flip it over, and I'm going to change the screens. Put my, if I place my hand down on it, it will slide with me. Um, yours may or may not do that. You know, be prepared to do what you have to do. I have used double-sided tape um, on a whole project once because the, the fabric just would not stay down while I was trying to do it. Okay. Take a quick peek. Yep, I see it. Take your time, don't get in a hurry. Okay. 
And then the further out you get as well, you won't have as, as much trouble um, uh, flipping this paper up because you'll have a lot less of it to flip up. You'll be working more on the outside. All right, just checking it here real quick, make sure. And there we have the first two rounds of color. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that gorgeous? All right, let's get over here. So nice, and I think I'm gonna need my big one for this because it definitely goes the whole distance. Okay, and there we go. <laughs> See, I did it again. I cut the corner off. Ugh. You want to be careful when you flip it over. Okay. But when we look at it on here, this is the part that we're going to be covering and stitching on, so we are safe. Okay. Our next one is going to be the next layers of white. Now, the next layers of white, of course, are the four inches. So we wanna make sure we have white side down. And there's our quarter of an inch right there. Now, we should be able to go all the way around, okay? So let's go ahead and get this one down. Make sure we can see it good, which I can. Okay, oh, I did it again. You guys, I am so sorry. I really should go ahead and switch this. Let's see if I can rearrange this a little bit. Okay. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. We're going to try and leave it right there. Okay. So if you see, we have flipped everything on the outside. I did accidentally cut the corner, but we have lots of, um, lots of space. We didn't lose anything. And then right here, we are definitely well within that quarter of an inch. And the pieces are definitely wide enough that you don't have to worry about not being on target, okay? So just get it where it's kind of close, not too far over a quarter of an inch. Okay, and then we're going to flip it here. So hopefully that part is better now that I've put both, both screens on there. So I guess that was kind of a test for me as well. Okay. I actually do like two, two or three screens up at one. I, I like two screens up at, at one time. I don't know about three screens. And needle up. Okay. There's one. Okay, so if we come back over here, as you can see, we have this one. We're gonna turn that light back, back on and do the next one, which will be this one right here. And as you see, it's gonna miss it completely. So we're, we are safe. We don't have to worry about accidentally stitching over something. Okay, that's looking good. And again, we just wanna make sure that white is on the right, the correct side because this white on white is really hard to see. Okay. Mm. There we 
we go. Single down, needle up. Slide it under. Get back to that corner. Take a quick peek. Yep, it's all down. Good, good, good. And the back stitch a little bit. Do the next one. Okay. Grab a pivot both pieces, place it down, and I slide my hand out very, very gently because I don't want it to accidentally unfold. And we're going to flip this up and just take a quick look. Ah, oh, looks good. All right. Pull up my thread from the bottom. I don't know if you've noticed, but sometimes when you're pulling the thread up from the bottom, it'll get caught on the feed dogs. Just, um, just work it loose or lift, lift the foot pedal just a little bit. And sometimes it'll do what you want it to. Um, but if it's giving you a lot of trouble, don't be afraid to pull it out and start over again. Don't start stitching until you have it exactly where you want it. And back stitch just a tad. the white now if anybody has any questions or comments or they want to know where to get something or they would like to get something you are welcome to email me at the manatee patchworkers at gmail.com again that's manatee patchworkers at gmail.com you can also email me at srqquilter at gmail.com. Um, you can go on our Facebook page and you are welcome to ask questions there, make a post, ask a question. Just make sure you tag me in it just so I know that I can, you know, if somebody's got a question, I can, I'll, it'll show me so I can look at it. Um, and you'll be looking for Robbie Four Acre or SRQ Quilter. Or just ask a question and Susan can get it to me. Okay. So, see, I've even caught one. Okay. So let's take a look at this one because it's folded over on us. But it looks good and I don't think we're going to have a problem with it. Um, but. We can always trim it that way. Okay, so then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to fold. Making sure that nothing flipped over on you. I think we can use a short one on these. Nestle that right up there. Trim. Hold it. Make sure everything stayed out of the way, which seemed to be my, my kryptonite tonight. Seems like things are getting in the way. The other fabrics and stuff. Get that out of the way. Fold it at the seam. One more time. Make 
make sure the fabric is staying down in the back. Keeps catching that white fabric right here. Um, but if you just kind of pull back on a little bit, it'll it'll let it up. Okay, there's that. And here's a good opportunity, since you have all four done, just to go ahead and pull out your ironing board, which you like mine? I got mine at Bits and Pieces. She has quite a few of them and she has many, many different styles. Like one of the ones that I absolutely fell in love with and bought later on was the Scooby-Doo. I love Scooby-Doo. It's like one of my all-time favorite um, characters from my childhood. All right. more time all right we're gonna add one more color and then I'm gonna let you guys go to get to work all the way to the end all right let's do one more we're gonna do one more pink let's see if I can find a big pink oh, that's a short pink there is a big pink and so I got a pink over here and a blue and a red so let's put it right here okay Again, this is the pink that they provided, and they want you to at least add two or three in each block because it is the one continuous color. It's the one thing that everybody has the same of. Okay? All right. So I'm going to make sure it's lined up there and there. Now this piece is the next size up. So this one is going to be the five and a half inch piece. Let me take a quick peek at it. Where should I put my paper? Oh, there it is, way over there. Okay. Uh, yeah, yep, that's the five and a half inch piece. So this is a five and a half. This was the four and a half. Four. This is the four inch, and this is the five and a half. And then we have one more six and a half. All right. Let's come on over here. We're going to do this one last one right here. Grab this, put that down, pull that up. Alrighty. And again, just take your time. Don't go too fast. Oh, let's take a look. Okay, looks like it didn't flip. I recommend checking that before you get going. So this stitch is going to be a little bit longer. One more stitch. Back stitch just a tad. And that, that, that. Okay. And then come back over here. And we're going to fold it down. It's just barely going to make it, but it'll make it. Trim it off. Flip it over. Flip it up. And voila. You now have the very next corner. Okay, so you're gonna go all the way around and you're gonna do all four of them, all the way around. And then you're gonna trim them all up, then you're gonna fold them out, iron them down, and then you're gonna do one more round of whites. So you're gonna have a white here and here um, with another color. And then this spot right here, this spot is where you're gonna use the two and a half inch wide by the four and a half. Yeah, two, these are two and a half by four and a half inches on the corners. This is where you use those two and a half by fours, okay? You're not gonna use them in here. They do not go in here, okay? And you do not have any two and a half by four inch of the of this pink material. So make sure you're using it um, on maybe one on the first, one on the second, and one on the third. Wherever you wanna put it, just try not to put them together, okay? So don't have two pinks um, side by side or here and here. You wanna make sure that you're kind of dispersing them through the whole block. All right, 
So when you're done, this, it should be similar to this one. It's not gonna be exactly, hopefully they're not exactly because that's not what we're aiming for, exactly the same. You can use the same fabrics um, throughout your block. Um, I think I have five different colors in here. Um, and I do have what looks like a solid, but that's actually a um, hand dyed fabric. Um, but it just doesn't have a lot of separation in color. Um, so I'm actually not gonna use it again in, in the next blocks. Um, but that's a, that's a grunge. Um, what they gave us is a grunge. Uh, and then these are some what they call blenders that I had. And um, try to limit your dark ones to just uh, one or two in there if you need to use dark or if you have dark. But mostly they want bright colors. They want it to be bright. And let me just one more time show you the picture that she has when she's done. See, she does have a couple of dark ones in here. Um, but they really just want bright colors, you know, like pineapple-y, you know, pineapples are, they're just popping with colors. So that's the idea is we're going to be using, you know, colors that pop and uh, stand out and are just bright and fun and make you think of Florida. <laughs> I know that's what I think of. All right. If, again, if you have any questions, um, we are at manatee You can contact us there through our website. You can also go to manatee patchworkers at gmail.com and drop questions in there. Or uh, if you are a member and you're doing this kit, which I hope usually it is a member doing the kit, um, you also have access to the membership um, page, which you can email or call any, any person on there that you need to. Um, I know Mary Lewis is doing it. So is um, Miss Susan and myself. So Rob Lee Foraker. So you're welcome to get into the uh, members page and you can call us that way or you can email us. Our emails are on there as well. All right. Any other questions? Feel free. And uh, this was a pleasure. So hopefully you have fun with this. And I think I have taken three, but I think I'm going to do uh, two more um, just because I need, a, I need a little more pink fabric. <laughs> so that's my, that's my solution. If I need more pink fabric, I'm just going to uh, go get a couple more kits. All right, again, thank you very much. I hope this is a valuable tool for you and that you have fun doing it. Thank you for walking through my miss up on pages and the screens. And uh, it really was a pleasure trying to work this out with you tonight. Um, I hope you have a fantastic night. God bless and hugs. <laughs>